Okay, this is um, this is how to log in to the administration panel. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the website at touchmedicalgroup.com. You're going to scroll down until you get to the bottom where it says admin login. You're going to click admin login, and then you're going to put in your username and password that we created for you. So I'm going to quickly put mine in. And then you're going to put in you're going to put in your your password, and then you're going to log in. You're going to press the log in button. Okay. Now, it won't look like it did anything when you first do that, but you will notice that in certain sections, like over here, you know, uh, right right where the little finger is, you'll see an edit button. And then down here, that's your by the way, that's your uh, your like your happenings. And then down here by your blog, you'll see an edit button, so that you can edit that. And you'll also see under the newsroom an edit button. And you can edit that table there. Okay? However, we want to go to the newsletter. So we're going to go to the very bottom where it says administration. On the le lower left side, it'll say welcome your name. In this case, my name. And then administration and logout. Logout logs you out. So just click on administration. And that's going to take you to the admin control panel. Anywhere where you see admin link and the word edit means you can edit. There's something you can edit on that page. So as we scroll down, you'll notice that under news, you can edit. Under newsletter, you can edit. Blog, you can edit. And calendar, you can edit. That's what you can edit. All right. And so the next video is going to be going into the newsletter. Okay. Uh, get ready for video two. Okay. Uh, this is video two. Now that we have logged into our, uh, our administration section, we're going to scroll down to the bottom where you see it says uh, uh, newsletter, uh, it says blog and calendar. See where it says edit? Those are where you press to edit those individual parts of your website. We're just going to concentrate on the newsletter for now. Uh, so we click on edit under newsletter and you come up with this screen where it says subscribers. Now, these are the people that are subscribed to your newsletter. Uh, over in your website, under information, there's a newsletter section, and there's a form that your your uh, potential clients or clients can fill in. And those are your and and once they they click on the OK button, they become a subscriber. They also have to go to their email and click on a link to prove they're a human being and not some spam bot. Um, so you'll notice that there's an unconfirmed subscribers button. Uh, the people that don't click that link are unconfirmed. So if ever you have anybody under there. You can confirm them manually if you want, just by clicking it. You don't have any now, but you can click there and, and click on the little check boxes here and here, and you can uh, make them subscribe. Now, you'll notice here you have add subscriber, import subscribers, and then unconfirmed subscribers. The add subscriber is pretty much doing it manually, where you can actually enter a name, address, city, state, zip, phone, email, country, and uh, some notes if you want, and then press save. However, do understand that that the person's going to get emailed that same email that says, please prove you're a human being, and if they didn't uh, ask for that, you're going to, they're not going to be happy. So make sure you get permission. Uh, import subscribers allows you to import what's called a CSV file, which is a comma delineated file. Essentially, when you click on that, you can import people, okay, instead of having them sign up. In case, let's say you have a big mailing list. Um, you choose the file. If the first row does contain the field names, click that so it can omit them. The text delimiter is the um, it's it's the, the the item the symbol that's between the text that you want to import. So if it's the name and and the text delimiter is quotes, and you can click down for a variety of text delimiters. But if it's the quotes, then you'll see like uh, Fred Smith in quotes. Okay. The uh, the field delimiter is like the comma or the semicolon after Fred Smith and the quotes. That dictates what the next field is. Okay? And then you would click upload and it would upload it. Uh, please do understand that in order to do that, your file has to adhere to the same structure. Name, address, city, city state, zip, and email. Okay? Don't worry about mail groups. Now, mail groups, what are those? I kind of created, in fact, I created some groups and they, they, uh, they went awry on one of them. But uh, you'll, you'll notice you can create what are called groups. Groups are... Um, uh, you know, what you, when you have a bunch of subscribers, let's say you have clients and non-clients. Um, you, you make two groups, one called clients, one called non-clients, 
and then you can actually add people to those lists. So if you know you have a bunch of clients and you know their names, they can get one completely different newsletter than let's say than let's say uh, non-clients. They can get a completely different newsletter to make sure like 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 you can upsell them to become a client. Finally, and you can add groups. You know, add to group means you can you can check mark these little little check boxes here, and then you can say add to group, and you can add them to whatever groups you make. Send newsletters does exactly that. It lets you send the newsletters that are out to various either people or groups. And finally, you can delete anybody who's checked. All right, so let's go to let's go to uh, mail groups real fast. Well, let's skip one. Mail groups. These are the groups we talked about where you you can actually make a group. So here we have a client one, we have non-clients two, even though really it's really one. I kind of messed up and added somebody twice. But this is where you would add a group. But you can also do it in the subscriber area, so it's kind of redundant. Logs and downloads is where you um, you, you pretty much just have logs of, of all the goings-ons. So you can see, you know, you can click on these and read what's going on. As far as subscribing, you know, who subscribed, whatever news, uh, confirmed, unconfirmed, all of that. Settings. Pretty much the only real setting is the send mails and packages. This is a spam um, spam filter, so we probably want to change it to say 10. All right, that means it's going to send 10 emails at a time. Which, uh, if you send you know any more than 20 or 30, your your ISP, your service provider for your internet, is going to think you're spamming and they're going to shut you down. So you want to have that number. It'll stagger them so that you don't spam. Finally, the important section: newsletters. This is where you actually create a newsletter. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that in the next video because these videos have to be a little short. So I'm going to stop it here. In the next video, we're going to actually create a newsletter. Okay, so this is the video on how to create a newsletter. So finally, we're in the newsletter section of the advanced panel. And you'll see you have create newsletter, upload newsletter. You'll have a list of your newsletters. And you can delete check newsletters. Uh, if you've already created a newsletter, you can actually click on the newsletter, and a little menu will come up that says Edit, Delete, and Send. So you can edit the, the, the email, the, the newsletter you already created, you can delete it, or you can send it to, to people. Uh, uh, what's interesting is you can create one newsletter and save it as a template, and then you can just keep editing that one if you wish, or you can make new ones. All right, to create a new one, you'll, create, you'll click on Create Newsletter, All right, and that's going to bring up the WYSIWYG newsletter. Uh, box. Now, I will I will say that the software I'm using does not allow a lot of this to work because it's uh, recording software and it's recording. So I'm just going to kind of go over everything rudimentarily. If there's any questions, you can always give me a call. All right, so what we have here is in the first box, if we look at the top area right here, okay, you'll see that there's, in first there's a little A there. Okay, that's your font. All right, so if you click there, you'll notice a bunch of fonts you can choose from. Okay? So we'll click Impact. Okay? Well, don't worry about that. Next to that, you have, like I said, some of these will show. Uh, that, that usually shows up with font sizes. Okay? But we'll just turn that off. Then after that, you have the, you have the, the uh, postscript. That, that makes a postscript, which pretty much what it means is like, it'll... it'll, it'll It'll raise the text, make it smaller above it, so you can put like like you know four squared or or fourth with a little th above it. The next after that is the, is the font color. You click there and you come up with a color table. You just click on a color and you think then you can then use that color. So click on a green. Although it's not it's not changing on the screen. Like I said, the recording software doesn't doesn't show everything. And then so that's the font color. Next to that is the fill color. That's the background behind the, uh, the, 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 te the text. So, for example, if you want to highlight text, if you want to make it look like you're highlighting, you choose the fill to be like a yellow. Then after that, you have the font size. All right, now this is, this is a, whole, a whole to do with uh, different fonts. You can choose all these cool fonts. And these, are known as, these are known as web-friendly fonts, okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to close it because it won't let me scroll. But you have Google Fonts, and then you have your basic fonts. Google Fonts are fonts that Google, if you use the Chrome browser, they'll show up. They'll look right. If, however, you use Firefox or Internet Explorer, they won't look right because they don't have these fonts. So your basic fonts are your, are your web fonts. They're, your, they're, they're accepted worldwide, um, regardless of browser. 
So you're you're better off using web safe uh, fonts. Below that we have the uh, we have bold, italics, underline, and strike through. Then the T is actually kind of like a, a custom text button where you can create really cool looking artistic text. And again, I'll I'll just open it just to show you. But you have the ability to choose your font type, the size, shadowing, which is like uh, drop shadows, paragraph structures, and then listings. Like this is like all of them in one thing. And then next to it, you have the bold italics, underline, strike through, all the different things. So this is kind of like a box to like just take care of your fonts in one shot. Underneath that, you have the color and the highlight, which is the background. And then you have the um, the also the um, left justify, center justify, right justify, fold justify, bullet lists, number lists, and then your your you know uh, indentation. Plus you have all kinds of kerning, line height, letter spacing, word spacing. So very very cool stuff there. Next to that, you have this. Uh, uh, artistic text button. I, I can't press it because it doesn't do anything when I press it. It just opens up like a sub, large, extra large, XXL, and multi box. But that actually normally brings up a artistic text box that um, lets you create, you know, like in Word, artistic text. Finally, you have an eraser that lets you erase stuff you've done wrong. All right, next to that, you have your justification left, center, and, and, and right. Notice you don't have the full justify there unless you go into that T and then all of a sudden you have uh, you have full justification right here which is kind of interesting that they omit that then below that uh, next to that you have the uh, headings you're, you're, that's kind of like a quick font size thing you click there and it'll show you a bunch of headings you can choose although once again it's not letting me open it but if it did you'd see heading one heading two heading three and they get bigger and bigger as they go then below that you have you have bullet here no, not there but just above that, you have the bullet lists, number lists, and then you have indentation. Okay, next to that, you have tables. Now, that's tables are a, a whole to-do. Um, very hard to explain, but if I open it up, I'll just show you what it looks like. It lets me... There we go. All right. With a table, what you do is they're like an Excel spreadsheet. You choose, not in that you can edit them like a spreadsheet, but in that they allow you to, to make a table filled with cells and you can color and you can you can organize your newsletter and make it neat and clean by using these and make columns and rows so you would choose let's say a 4x4 four four grid and it lights up 4x4 four four. and that's all you have to do to actually make the table then you just exit and it, the table is made but if you want you can also choose the rows and columns and or cells and you can color them you can make a border the cell size the padding which is space within the cell or you can delete the table entirely, or you can modify it, or you can auto-format, which makes everything that's in it fit automatically. All right, so that's that's what that is. And notice it doesn't show up because in the recording software it won't let me. All right, so uh, next to that we have emojicons. These are these are emojis. They're like cute little faces and stuff you can put in there. Why is there? I don't know because I can't see using that in a newsletter. Uh, flash next to that. If you have a flash file or a flash video, you can show that. Next to that, we have pretty much, I think, a theta. Uh, but what that does is actually bring up symbols. So that's your symbol icon. For any weird symbols you need to use, or if you're doing Spanish, you need, you need the upside down uh, or a, a question mark or the accent. And then below that is the link. So you can make a hyperlink. So let's say you have a picture or a text that you want to link to. You just click that. You, you highlight the text. You click the link button, and it lets you make a link. And then next to that is picture. Very important. If you want to put pictures in your newsletter, and I'm sure you will, you must use that. And what it does is, it, it, when you open up the, the picture uh, uh, requester, you have to actually uh, upload your own image. So you would just click there and, you know, you'd, uh, I, I, it's not showing on the thing, but, but you essentially put the image source and it tells you to load, to load it. You know, there's a load button. Well, let me see if I click load more. Okay, there we go. So, you wouldn't do that. You would do your own. So, I think you click... No, it's not styles. All right, it's not showing here for whatever weird reason, but it's it usually has a browse button, and you browse your own. And then you can put your own images in there. Also, you can give it a, 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 a title. Um, you can, you know, choose an alignment, like center or left, right. And then you have your margins. So I, I apologize. I wish it would show everything, 
but uh, this, this recording software does kind of make it weird. But anyway, that's how you add an image. The next to that is a YouTube video you can add. So if you have a YouTube video you want to show. And then finally, you have what's called a line spacer. And that lets you create a line so you can separate things. Next to that, you have your search, your HTML, and your clipboard. You'll probably never use any of those. But underneath that is undo and redo, and that you may actually use. When you click undo, it'll undo the last thing you do. And if you make a mistake and press undo, you can click redo, which is the other hour. Right now it's grayed out because there's nothing to redo. But And that'll, that'll go forward. Finally, underneath is the file name right here. And you can name it something. So you can click there and you can name it, uh, you know, like, like my newsletter. All right. And then finally, you can either save it or cancel it. So if you save it, it'll then save that to your newsletter. And you'll see here now you have my newsletter. We're going to delete my newsletter because we don't need it. But let's say we want to edit it. You, can, you click on edit. If I can ever click on it. There we go. And we didn't put anything in there, so there's nothing to really edit. But And then you can, you can edit it and then either save it or cancel. I'm going to cancel out. And then finally, I am going to delete. So you check it, and then you click delete check newsletters. And then it deletes it. All right, finally, upload newsletter. And I have to end this video because it's getting too long. Um, upload newsletter lets you upload your own newsletter you created, let's say, in Word. Um, or, or, or an other compatible program. It, I believe it'll load either doc files and RTF, which is rich text format. And then you just choose the file and then click upload, and it'll it'll upload it into the here, and then you can edit it. Further. That's pretty much everything. Um, you know, I've already went over the other top menus, and then there's administration, which brings you back to the administration panel, and then you can always log out, and that logs you out of the system, and any changes you made are saved. Uh, assuming you press the save button. So there you go. That's your newsletter uh, and how to use the admin panel. Hope this uh, was informative, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Silly me, I forgot to show you guys how to actually send a newsletter. So this is the last video in the series. Sorry about that. So let's say it's time time to... Uh, let's say it's time to send a newsletter. Sorry about my phone there. Um... At this point, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the newsletters. You're going to click a newsletter, and you're going to click send. Okay? Now what you're going to get is a, is, is a the newsletter send requester. Here you have a, a drop-down to, to pick the newsletters you have. If you have more than one, it'll show them all. You pick the one you want to send. Mail subject is the subject. It's the They'll put something in there automatically, but you can put something like uh, Touch Medical Group Mark's Newsletters. Let's put that in there. So touch medical group March newsletter. You know, and if you if you make mistakes, you can always just go back and edit. And then you can put a text message there, uh, especially with you know users without each HTML email support. What that means is, if a if a client cannot see HTML graphics and stuff formatting. And their email client, they can only see text, then you're going to want to put a message there saying something to the effect of, if you cannot view this uh, email, visit this web page, and this is where our, our newsletter is. And your newsletters actually do have a definitive web page, so you, you can actually create a link. But worst case, you can always just upload as a PDF or something, uh, your, your newsletter. All right, then underneath that, you have send to administrator only. That's a diagnostic switch. That lets you kind of like look at your newsletter and make sure it's sending properly and looks good before you actually send it out to people. Now, if you had a ton of people, uh, you'd have a, a subscribers list. You click here, and right now there's only, there's Jason pretty much right now, okay? Um, and then you, you can add him, and now he's in the selected subscribers, then you, you know, normally you wouldn't do this one at a time. It would be tons of people at once. But, and again, you can do this as lo as groups. Uh, you can you can just select a few. Again, maybe it's because I'm on an iPad right now doing this, but on a normal computer, you would see the full list. So if there was 50 people in your subscriber list, you would see 50 people in a drop-down, uh, in a, in a uh, um, what do you call it, in a text box with a slider. 
and then you could multiple choose, you know, using either shift or control, you could choose multiple people and move them over with the move over arrow, the to the right arrow. To the left um, uh, takes them out of a group, so you can move someone out by clicking that arrow, and you'll see there's no no, no more people in there. And now when you go here, there's there's two people. So you can you can add people. Also, and I don't see it here, but normally you can choose what group, and it'll send it to the group. And I don't see it here, but that's probably because it's on a, on an iPad. It's a mobile version. This is the mobile version. The full version is different in that it has a few more features. One being the, the large you know um, scroll list and and the send to group, which I don't know why that's missing, but. Anyway, and it says here, in case you need to send the newsletter to a few subscribers, just, you know, just move over the few you want to send them to. Otherwise, uh, leave it empty and it'll, it'll go to everybody. Then you choose the file if you want to attach something to your newsletter, like a PDF or a picture or a music file or a video. You can choose a file to uh, append to it. Don't make it too big, though, because some people email clients don't have a lot of space, 5 megs or less. Finally, you have the choice of the newsletter as plain text. Uh, that means there won't be any graphics or any prettiness because they can't do that. So you click that. Then you click on send. That's pretty much it for newsletter. I mean, that's, that's how you send them. And uh, if there's any questions or if it looks a little different because you're using a normal computer, just give me a call and I'll, I'll be happy to walk you through it. But it's really not very hard. And that's pretty much it. So I uh, hope this, uh, this works for you and I hope you... Uh, create great newsletters all right take care and uh, we'll uh, I'll create some some more video tutorials for the other for your blog and for your calendar in the near future all right bye